I have generally taken inspiration from temple art and architecture. Uh, so what you see on the screen right now is a motif from Mysore Palace. So this motif is from where I have picked two of my characters. The first is the Ganda Berunda. So if you will see in the center the bird, the two-headed bird. It is also a part of my book cover. It, this is the bird is very important in my book. And the next character that I have created is the Yalzi. So in my book, I have an entire uh, loka or a kingdom called as the Yalzi kingdom. The Indian gaming market is also growing, you know, at a character of 28 to 30 percent. So video games are also a, a, an avenue for us to tell good stories and good uh, Indo-Epic characters. The traditional dance ritual of Bhutapola. Because of the unfiltered representation of the villages and our customs, uh, the movie has received success in all parts of the country. Today, we speak on the relevance of Indo-Epic fantasy and stories through Jarota, which is a book that has been written by Kakoli Singha, our speaker today. She is an engineer and uh, an MBA graduate from Mumbai, now in insurance and fintech. With several published short stories and poems, she has now embarked on a journey to create a series of books based on Indo-fantasy and mythology. Jarota, War of Evil Shadows, is the first of many stories built on the vibrant culture of Bharatvarsh. So, namaste everyone. Um, I feel very honored and privileged to be here with you today. I wish to thank uh, Sangam Talks for allowing me to put forth my thoughts on this platform. Uh, so Sangam Talks is one of the leading schools of thought uh, that can truly claim to be shaping the narrative of India globally. So it is with great humility that I approach my topic today. So my topic for today is uh, the relevance of Indo-Epic stories for uh, India and the world. So I have widened my original uh, scope to include all types of Indo-Epic stories. I'm not just limiting myself to fantasy anymore. Uh, so I guess you've already got a brief introduction about me uh, from Ujaswi. So I'm very passionate about storytelling. Um, and uh, right now I have focused myself on building a series of books um, that are based on Indic fantasy and uh, mythology. So Jarota, War of Evil Shadows is my first book. It is based on this Indic fantasy world. It has been published by Garud Prakashan. It is available on all popular uh, websites. So beginning with uh, today's discussion, uh, I will be discussing the topic in three parts, uh, beginning with why Indo-Epic stories are important, uh, how to build such uh, new uh, epic stories, and what are the different formats in which we can present our stories. So after every part, I will also summarize at the end of the part so that we can keep a track of all that has been covered in that particular uh, part of the discussion. So the first part is, why do uh, Indo-Epic stories matter? So our first reason is that they help in the creation of a common value system across the globe. Uh, so let me tell you how. Among all the things that connect us together globally, stories are the foremost. So if we go down the history of storytelling, we will find common stories and common characters among cultures of Asia, Europe, Africa, along with the Indian subcontinent. So there are a lot of similarities in the stories across China, Myanmar, Malaysia. So we will discuss this in due course. So in modern times, if we wish to take the mind share of other countries, stories play a very important role. Uh, so let us begin with the first example, which is the Indian and the Greek stories. So if you must know, uh, be knowing Greek stories, there are a lot of uh, pagan deities even in Greek uh, mythology. So on one hand in India, we have Indra. Uh, which is the king of Devas. He is the ruler of lightning, thunder, storms, rain. Same lens, we can view uh, the deities Zeus. Not only are they both the king of gods, but they also possess the same weapon, which is the thunderbolt. They even live in quite similar places, which is Indra stays in Mount Meru and Zeus stays at Mount Olympus. And if you go and read their stories, they are also very similar uh, and involve slaying of monsters. Then the next pair we have is Lord Yama in India and the Greek god Hades. They are both god of the dead and king of the underworld. They each assign a dead, the dead a place in either hell or heaven based on their virtues. 
then the next is the subtle rishis so according to our epics uh, the subtle rishis are seven defined sages who have been accorded a semi immortal status which, which they have acquired over time by their extreme penance and yogic power in ancient vedic astronomy a cluster of seven bright stars have been conferred with this name of subtle rishis now similarly in greek mythology this a pair of stars are known as the seven sisters of pleiades now these similarities are not just limited to characters but even to the stories so for example if uh, you, uh, as a child you must have heard the story of jatayu and his older brother sampati so as the story goes jatayu and sampati often flew the skies together they always competed with each other who can go higher so it was a very brotherly competition that they had um one day jatayu happened to fly very close to the sun uh, and sampati wanted to protect him so sampati flew after him and then spread his wings and protected jatayu but uh, in turn sampati himself had his wings burnt and he fell straight to the ground so the same story it exists in greek mythology also among the brothers icarus and daedalus and icarus has the same fate as that of sampati uh then similarly if we look at indian and japanese stories there are a lot of similarities in characters and deities so there is a japanese uh, deity called as kangiten so the name is also uh, very similar uh, to lord ganesha that is he is known as vinayaka ten which is very similar to the vinayak that we use uh so like uh, lord ganesh vinayaka is also remover of obstacles and if you pray to him then he bestows good fortunes on on you and show us success and good health just like ganpati so apart from this there are also a lot of similarities in indian and egyptian cultures so a few of them are mentioned on screen here so as you can see saraswati and uh, there is a counterpart even of uh, goddess saraswati in egypt lord brahma in egypt so uh, you know india has expanded to other countries not by sword but by sharing these stories these philosophies epics and characters so if you will see then many times we observe characters and scenes from our stories having formed an essential part of epics in other cultures um narrative of india may be affected because of you know the territorial isolation that we have but we can use these common stories to strike a chord with the uh, pagan lands of uh, europe and asia america and thus build new roots globally then the next reason why stories matter Uh, is they help to reinforce ethics so how is that owing to our pagan roots now we have a lot of stories with morals if we begin you know as children we all hear ramayana and mahabharata these are primarily the first stories that we hear from our parents and grandparents uh so in ramayana lord rama and his followers they outline how an ideal society should uh, you know behave how they should conduct themselves similarly you know good values are propagated by krishna in mahabharata so you know these are the longer epics but even in shorter stories uh, we have stories with values uh, such as vikram vetal panchatantra so in these stories morals are clearly defined there are villains they have negative traits there are heroes they have positive traits so we can learn you know they help to build a cross border value system that we can share and emulate globally Uh, so we have had writers such as devyas valmiki pandit vishnu sharma bhavpuri kalidas so many more you know they have contributed immensely to this uh, literature in india so even today if you will see there are movies that are being created on these stories so there is a soon to be released movie uh, you know on abhigyanam shakuntalam uh, which is going to be released soon so it is by mahakavi kalidas so these stories they don't lose their values even after so many years and you know such a long period of time uh then another reason why stories are important is that they help to instill uh, heroism so in rrr both the heroes you know uh, raju and bhim uh, they take on heroes which are uh, having stronger ammunition than guns so in the words of rajamouli himself when he was interviewed uh, he said that the spectacular success of rrr is its unapologetic heroism so the movie he says is inspired in part by ramayan mahabharat you know which are stories that resonate with everyone across time age or gender so if you will observe the movie very closely uh, then there are a lot of similarities with uh, you know the, the characters in the movie from the indian epics 
because of the strength that they have their devotion their duty the costumes that they wear in the climax so there is a song ramam ragavam so this is where you can see the similarities with our indian epics uh, so continuing with uh, heroism and hope so let let's discuss some other stories in jungle book also mowgli takes on mighty and ferocious sher khan uh, to end the you know fear and tyranny in the jungle so that is a story of uh, filling us with hope then bahubali uh, also takes on bhalal dev uh, avengers fight thanos so in each of these stories the same theme of bravery overthrow overthrowing tyranny emerges so this helps to build a can do spirit in the minds of the viewers so that i can also be a hero i can also rise up to the occasion and then i can use these uh, you know values to extend and face them in the challenges in my own life so they help to fill us with heroism and hope then uh, the next reason why stories matter is they help to rebuild customs uh, so there are many customs you know in indian villages and over time because of westernization their practices gradually reduced Uh, so we can use stories to bring these local customs into the mainstream audience so this can help us reclaim our civilizational roots for example the recent very recent success of kantara it is a testimony to the common thread of culture customs that bind us together as a country so movie is a riveting drama of uh, you know the traditional dance ritual of bhuta pola because of the unfiltered representation of the villages and our customs Uh, the movie has received success in all parts of the country so such stories are found in every culture and every civilization across the globe so for example chinese you know uh, writers uh, there are several tv series that are based on jinjia fantasy uh, it is a genre of fantasy influenced by chinese mythology martial arts traditional medicine everything that you know they could they can put in they put it in that so it enables chinese youth to reconnect with their own roots uh, then some more ways you know where we can infuse our culture in stories uh, for example if you have heard the divara song it actually has uh, shlokas from sundarkand so verses that were recited by jambavan to remind lord hanuman of his strength so this is a very clear way of uh, trying to infuse uh, and reconnect with our roots in a to a hindi song or a telugu song then um, other such examples include you know there are these foreign series with references of slavic culture norse culture so they all try to reconnect the reader with their roots whatever and their culture they are putting it on the television screen so now we have come to the end of the first part of our discussion so in order to summarize so let us summarize why uh, you know indo epic stories are uh, important so stories uh, help us in overcoming our geographical isolation um they help us strike a chord with other civilizations having similar cultures and values we already saw it to examples of indian greek japanese cultures then the second point is that fantasy is transcendental it helps us build an ideal world where you can show right and you can show wrong very clearly without any moral subversion so like we have stories of ramayana mahabharata we have stories of panchatantra so it is one of the best ways to create a value system and then spread it across the globe and uh, stories also are a way to keep in touch with our roots and to keep our traditional customs alive so this is the first part that you know we have end uh, we have come to the end uh, now the second part is what should we do so now we know that stories are important so how should we go about so we have to build more stories so how do we build more stories first we need to analyze indian stories to understand what are our philosophies what are our, our value systems what are the type of characters what are the dialogues we must revisit indian stories that have done phenomenally in the west so recent example is rrr then we had lagan in the past so this will help us understand the global creative acceptance of indian storytelling then we must also ensure to focus on our culture when we are building these stories we can also rewrite or extend stories from regional languages and folk tales uh, so regional stories talking on regional stories we cannot fathom the importance of regional stories in uplifting the image of a nation and its citizens so all the characters on screen there have been so many writers writing tales around these characters 
and the combined tears of all these people they you know just built an elevated image of vikramaditya or abraham lincoln in our minds you know uh, so we feel that these are the best of leaders and they have served the best of nation but actually it's just the different stories that we hear over time and there have been so many story writers on you know building the stories around these characters that they make them feel the best so we must focus on you know building such regional stories so how do we build a story we need to build characters so that is the first part uh, you can take inspiration from indian stories indian art you can take inspiration from temples or even real life so i will tell you since i have uh, you know written jarota i will tell you where what has been the inspiration for me in writing the characters for jarota so i have generally taken inspiration from temple art and architecture uh so what you see on the screen right now is a motif from mysore palace so this motif is from where i have picked two of my characters the first is the ganda berunda so if you will see in the center the bird the two headed bird it is also a part of my book cover it this is the bird is very important in my book and the next character that i have created is the yazi so in my book i have an entire uh, loka or a kingdom called as a yazi kingdom from where you know yeah i have inspired the character from the mysore palace motif uh, then also there are some other characters in my books that i have got you know through some research so i have kinnara i have apsara yaksha and i have then you know given them uh, names and powers as fit as you know i have felt is fit for my storyline uh, for example kinnara in my book his name is potla he has the power to teleport so i have taken some uh, you know leeway free way to give them names and powers as as what i have deemed fit the apsaras in my uh, book they are called jal apsaras and they are architects they live under the lakes yaksha in my books in my book he speaks in riddles uh, and he guides whenever riyan and potla fall in any you know dilemma so he guides them through riddles so you can also create similar characters in your story then the next aspect of uh, creating a story is creating a storyline so in my book i'll tell you what has been what i had originally viewed the storyline of uh, you know my book so it's a young boy named riyan who is very naughty he runs away from boarding school then on the way he gets attacked by some kidnappers so when he's running from these kidnappers that is when he meets this uh, young kinnara called potla who protects him and, and then from there the journey begins he takes him he takes uh, riyan to this mythical kingdom of jarota and then they you know go through different adventures so this is how my movie uh, how my book takes off then uh, apart from main uh, plot you also need to have character journey that's very important every character must be better than what he had started so for example in jarota riyan is very naughty and then but then finally towards the end of the book he learns a lot of values and he hopes to protect uh, dharma similarly another character that is potla he is initially a little afraid but then towards the end of the book he becomes very brave so you need to build individual character journeys for your characters so this uh, concludes the second part then now the third part is the uh, storytelling formats so what are the different formats we have we can tell stories through movies we can tell stories through comics we can tell them through animation so let us see them one by one uh so let us start with movies how can we tell indo epic stories through movies so now this entirely what is there on the screen is the current context so if you will see the current context of you know uh, epic stories is largely driven by larger than life characters all powerful heroes villains like avatar avengers so they are grossing you know billions of dollars on the box office the top 10 these are the top 10 highest grossing movies and these are all fantasy movies built in extraordinary worlds so the west has been successful in building these blockbuster characters and each of these characters have brought millions of dollars to what all movie theaters tv rights merchandise and all these assets they have been created only in the last 20 years okay so apart from commercial successes they also instill pride amongst the country for making these kind of movies now if you go to india India also has created some larger than life heroes in the uh, past 10 years or so so one classic example is uh, bahubali so the audience was so hooked on the bahubali that uh, you know they spent a year decoding the climax of the first movie ki 
आई थिंक कटप्पा ने बाहुबली को क्यों मारा एंड दीगली अवेटेड इट्स रेजोल्यूशन इन द सेकेंड सो दिस वॉज द रोलिंग सक्सेस नाउ रिसेंटली वी कैन ऑल्सो सी द सक्सेस ऑफ आर 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 वर्ल्ड वाइड सो दे आर इवन परफॉर्मिंग नाटो नाटो इन दस्कर्स सो द फिनोमिनल यू नो सक्सेस ऑफ आर 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 दिस ब्रिंग्स इमेंस राइट टू अवर कंट्री रेकग्नेशन फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब सो वी मस्ट मेक इट अ पॉइंट टू यू नो बिल्ड मोर फैंटेसी थीम्ड मूवीज दैट आर रूटेड इन इंडियन कल्चर then the next format is uh, comics so we have all grown up reading channa mama ma chitra katha raj comics so the global book market you know it is estimated to be 15.5 billion dollars and uh, comics are actually you know popularity is increasing worldwide so you can find it from the increase in footfall at comic con events so around 1.5 lakh attendees are there in new york 1.1 lakh attendees in japan so comics is also a very important medium for communication with the youth uh, so we need to build you know new age indian comics to represent our comics or our stories at a global scale so we have to build characters and stories to fit these global consumers that are currently hooked on to marvel or dc comics uh, then also there is animation in recent times there is tremendous rise in animation uh because you know you can see it from the increase in animated series and games that are there right now on the television uh, apart from gods goddesses heroes many new age characters are also being turned into series so this is a tremendous opportunity for us to showcase our indo epic stories in these formats then there are also games so uh new games and characters are built from uh, indian civilization the indian gaming market is also growing you know at a category of 28 to 30% so video games are also a, a, an avenue for us to tell good stories and good uh, indo epic characters then the last part is, is that we can use structures structures and carvings to share our narrative so this is uh, basically from the ancient past that i'm talking so uh, there is the kailasa temple at elora so now this temple has numerous caves with many carvings so the the one on the screen is the carving of the kurukshetra wall it is coordinately carved on one of the walls now the detail with which these scenes have been carved they bring to life the reality of what might have actually occurred at that time so you know this architectural heritage is also a way of storytelling if you visit mahabalipuram so i had visited recently so you will see carvings depicting many stories so one was uh, you know this was a uh, carving by Uh, of the penance which was done by bhagirath to please Shiv- shiva and allow ganga to descend on the earth so now the question for us is uh, would it be possible for us to build such stories build such structures now which are speaking of our heritage and culture can we construct new buildings uh, in indian style statues with indian stories can there be gardens parks that represent indian themes so that is the question for us to ponder now uh, summarizing the second part Uh, so actually this is the last part of our discussion um, in order to take this narrative globally we need to create indo epic stories we can take cues from our culture from our architecture from our folklore uh, to build and narrate new stories we can use different formats such as movies comics animations gamings even structures to narrate the stories and further our indo uh, epic you know cause Uh, so then uh, thank you we have come to the end of our discussion uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my thoughts here you can share your feedback and queries to me on uh, jaruta series at gmail you can follow me on insta you can follow me on facebook um, and also please uh, you know you can buy my first book jaruta it is available at garuda books and amazon uh, it is also available in uh, select bookstores i am currently working on my second novel of the series it will be for young adults uh, with good amount of uh, you know drama romance science fiction uh, all within the realm of indic fantasy so that is part 2 i look forward to your support in my endeavor uh, in taking this indic fantasy uh, narrative global thank you kakuli ji for that wonderful session uh, we'll step into question and answers now Namaste Kakuli ji thank you for the lovely uh, presentation uh, i know that you're talking about indian fantasy and things from our older times and capturing those in stories and 
of course, the importance is not lost on me. Um, but I was also thinking we tend to forget our recent history as well. And there's a lot of uh, distortion that's happened around it. So to, you know, um, just as an idea I'm putting out there because people watch Sangam Talks. Thank you, Sangam Talks, for doing this great work so that people can hear different ideas. But I was thinking in the way we are covering our uh, long time past, distant past, we can cover our recent past also in terms of stories, but putting something like you have in movies, you know, this is a true story, but it has been animated. Like, you know, air crash has happened and they make a story out of a Titanic was a truth. The rest of the story was dramatized, but you can make it entirely on true characters and yes, show yes. and colonization happen. I don't know whether that's relevant to your talk. Forgive me if I have, uh, I don't know, crossed a line or anything here. Thank you. Oh. So uh, thank you, Aditi ji. Um, so definitely what you have touched upon is also one of the areas where we can have active Indian uh, uh, stories. So we can take from our recent past, maybe we can take characters from the freedom struggle and glorify them. So I, uh, you know, I did come across a lot of stories on uh, Abraham Lincoln, for example. So, you know, who knows how much of it is, uh, you know, uh, so there are such exaggerated stories that, you know, he has single-handedly picked a, a tree and uprooted a tree and so there are so many stories that people have written around Abraham Lincoln so definitely we can take new age characters and we can have such uh, you know epic stories around them so we could take some of our freedom fighters we can take some of the people uh, from our uh, you know some of the uh, scientists or some of the leading uh, eminent personalities and then build epic stories around them so definitely Aditi ji can be done I hope you do it uh, you know, and uh, and I hope you build some uh, stories around these characters as well. I would love to read them. I was just thinking, yes, we do write about uh, very well-known, like Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar yes, yes. Azad and many of them. Yes, yes definitely. Highlighting the heroism of everyday people, not of individual characters, but as a community. Um, yes. Because what happens is we tend to look at larger than life characters. And I know that sells, like you showed in your uh, chart. Yes, yes. Books itself. So the selling factor has to be taken into consideration. That's a oh, practical. Yes. Exactly. Like Captain America. Captain America, America brings in like billions of dollars to the country. So it is an American icon. And we yes. are watching the movie. So we need to have, you know, Captain India or something like that on the big screen as well. But I was thinking more in terms of community because I feel the Hindu way of looking at things is getting lost sometimes as we look at how West glamorizes their people. Through stories or not, they glamorize in a certain uh, framework, and we I, have I framework. And some of our frameworks have also been that. Where Rama and Krishna, we talk yeah. about them, but we also talk about individual characters. But we, the the force of the community, I think that is where, in simple struggles, how people have gone against odds without the social fame and status, yeah, uh, yeah. without the support of the society, and how they have achieved things, whether as an individual or community is really crucial because the prominent characters get a lot of, I don't know, publicity. I, that's not the right word because they deserve the publicity. Yes, um, yes. It's not false. Uh, it, they deserve it for the heroism, but it's important. I think this, so that is what I was thinking. Perhaps that is something people could keep in mind. Ki, um, everyday people, ke kya struggles hai? against all odds, without the advantages of social fame, status, having lots of money, great professions, uh, without having a big backstory and a backing. Uh, without having yes. a group of people supporting them in a sansthan or anything, how yes. do you do it? Slowly bringing that out because that instills, I think, the most quintessential Hindu values, yes. which is a USP, a unique selling point of Hinduism, as yes. opposed to the Western, where everybody is behind one person, and Baki sub secondary, you know, or tertiary. Okay, so um, just a little bit of an auxiliary to what uh, Aditi ji said. I think it's important that we do that ourselves before uh, the DC and the Marvel merchandises and franchises take it over because uh, they are infamous for distortions. So I think it's extremely important that we do it first. Thank you uh, for the wonderful talk. Uh, and also for your thoughts on, I mean, how, of course, on how all the uh, Indic values and all that can be spread, uh, which is something in general which we all realize and we agree on. But uh, what I want to say is actually it's not a question, it is more of a thought on which I would invite your thoughts also. 
part of the problem why these distortions are happening is also that our value systems itself have been corrupted. So when we talk about uh, building new stories or uh, I mean about uh, building characters um, or disseminating or uh, teaching values through these stories, then we have to also guard against this particular factor. For instance, uh, take the character, I'm just taking it in example, since I don't know how the characters are built in your story, the character of Kinnara. They can easily get hijacked into the narrative of say the global uh, homosexuality and LGTB rights, uh, this thing. What I mean to say is that this overpowering uh, westernized or Christian value system, which in loose terms is referred to as Christian imperialism, as in they are not violent imperialists, but their values, their ideas, are their penetration is very deep, not only in India, but in all cultures worldwide, which is very difficult to resist for, uh, if I may use the term, open culture like India, which very gladly accepts ideas. So when you're talking about Indic all the time, it is just an ideal, whereas it is actually to preserve those value systems in the storytelling. I mean, not from your individual point of view, but uh, other writers. It is very easy that things are pitched as Indic, but they're actually, uh, what they are uh, sending is actually not Indic values at all, but the modernized, globalized uh, values. So how do you, because just yesterday we had a talk on this book called Arya, which actually brings out authentic uh, narrative of old characters. So when you're building new characters, you have to really guard against this phenomena, number one, uh, because uh, what is happening is that even the older characters are getting distorted along the new globalized a value system or it's not really a value it is a penetration of ideas actually so how exactly do you see this rolling which direction do you see this rolling i mean not just with the, as you as a writer but other writers in your genre who are building stories on indic characters but they might in uh, unwittingly be transmitting actually globalized values rather than indic values um, yes, yeah, so Smita, this is a very, you know, very pertinent question in today's time, um, especially that after you see a lot of this uh, distortion that happens in, in the story. So now the answer to this is that at our level, we need to, you know, stand up and, and you know, stop when there are certain characters or certain values which are not um, associated with our, uh, you know, culture or civilization. And then that we find it in our, you know, somebody is trying to impose it on our characters. So, for example, if you will see, there is a mass movement against, uh, you know, distortions in Bollywood. Uh, so there are hashtags every day and uh, there are a lot of, you know, clips uh, wherein the, the, this distortion is happening, which is being circulated and people are not taking it anymore. Uh, so people are standing up and people are, uh, you know, uh, uh, standing against such kind of moral subversion of our Indian values, Indian characters in Bollywood movies. So that is very evident from, you know, this. The, the entire movie industry collapsing and the movie is not doing well and people actually standing up and saying that, you know, we cannot take such distortions anymore. So I think when there are characters which are being built in a way uh, which do not actually, uh, you know, uh, showcase our values, it is at our individual level that we need to stand up and uh, stand against such subversion. And it is happening. So, you know, it is a collective call that we need to take as a society. So just continuing on that, like you said, you mentioned the reactions uh, which kind of act on social media which kind of act as a check to this kind of a uh, hijacking of the stories to uh, foreign values or rather alien values but uh, bollywood one is a very high visibility phenomena i am talking right now only in context of the book which is a or which can become a more insidious uh, manner of entering the children's of uh, the youth psyche so that is why uh, and secondly the values that we talk about in social media are a very confused set what a woman should be wearing whether that is indian values or not so our own values are also very confused so i am not talking about the noisy space of social media on a high visibility medium like bollywood but a more uh, books which can be a very effective way 
of uh, conveying values and yet a very insidious way of uh, you know making values creep in which are not really consistent with the indic uh, values and what is the critical response uh, to this so uh, unfortunately a lot of people who write itself are really not from the uh, indic frame of mind so that is what i was talking about that when you are creating values uh, creating characters along indic lines that is something i mean which we have to really guard against because i don't know what sort of a framework is there for checking or checking or let's say you know critically appraising uh, the values of books so in terms of books you know you will have to read it so it also depends on the publication uh, for example um, when i wrote jarota um, i uh, had a approached a number of publishers but then the you know only those publishers whose thought and alignment matches with my story thought and align, alignment were open so you know garud prakashan was one of the indic you know it is one of the indic publishers so they were open and uh, they were willing to uh, work with me on the book together i had an editor the editor you know they come with uh, many years of experience and we had to sit and the book went through four edits so it took almost two years to edit the book and there were any references which were not you know as per uh, i mean i had not mentioned any uh, you know uh, references against uh, the indic customs but if had there been any indic value you know non indic values in the book definitely the editor would have pointed it out to me because there were four edits and you know the ed entire editing process went on for two years uh, but then that is a call you know which the uh, editor and the publication house takes so uh, it will be difficult for me to comment on with other uh, publishers but you know garud prakashan was very firm you know that the entire manuscript was read four times and any uh, you know we had to rework and reword many things uh, so you know it was ensured that there is no distortion so it I, i think it needs to be done at a publication level and i think you need to align yourself uh, with the publication houses and the type of books that they are Uh, so at your level if you you know want to be aligned probably you will have to see some publication house which prints books which are in alignment with your uh, indic values indic thought so garud prakashan is one of them i'm sure there will be several uh, you know as as you rightly mentioned uh, you know indic a i think uh, will be one of the publishers so you will have to take a personal call uh, because you will have to trust that the editing team has uh, done the due diligence and they have done the uh, right kind of uh, you know framing of or uh, the narrative in the books and then probably you can you know gift it to to children or gift it to adults very well uh, kakoli ji i think uh, even before reading the book it is important that you read the author and uh, read the publications so that you understand the pattern of content that they bring out um i believe smita ji was asking about the purity of the values as she mentioned in the chat box i will conclude with my question I wanted to ask you what is jarota what does it mean and uh, do you think that um, if we made something like uh, an avengers or if we made something like uh, a dc film it would be well received um, within the indian audience because they seem to be quite hypocritical hypocritically um, you know ridiculing uh, concepts of uh, magnification of hanuman and all of that but suddenly when hulk magnifies into the monster that he becomes or the hero that he becomes uh, it it suddenly becomes something that is enjoyed and lauded in in theater film in theaters so so can you shed light on how this entire fantasy production has become the monopoly of the americans because only they have the validation to do that uh so thank you the first part uh, what is jarota jarota is actually a mythical kingdom in my book uh, it is a kingdom wherein uh, you know uh, people called manugans live they have extraordinary powers and i have taken the liberty to take characters from temples and architecture in my book and then so it is you know this little boy in, in jarota and the experiences that he has and the different adventures through rituals and games that he has uh, and finally the values that he learns uh now coming to the second part so i think we are breaking the uh, monopoly slowly and i mean it's not like you know we have 10 movies all at once so i think uh, rrr has uh, you know taken uh, the indian storytelling uh, global and there have been theaters 
in japan and china that have been that have gone house full within seconds and people are dancing and uh, to the natu natu song in the theaters even globally uh, so i think it is breaking somewhere there are in, there is acceptance to indian characters indian way of storytelling uh, obviously one uh, challenge would be that there is a lot of budget uh, that could be required but i think there you know with india becoming one of the leading economies i'm sure that we you know must be having filmmakers to create such films with you know a, a, with great vision and with you know great heroism so actually rajamouli uh, ji has also said that you know one of the major reasons why rrr rrr is a success is because there is this unapologetic heroism that has been displayed you know if you will see the scenes uh, you know some of the scenes are still in in my uh, mind where you know he takes the animals from the jungles and he unleashes them on the crowd so that is unapologetic heroism it is an indian way of storytelling but it is gaining uh, appreciation in the west so i'm sure slowly and steadily we will find our place in the in the global landscape as well kakuli i was just listening to the last uh, reply that you had given to uh, ojasvi and uh, um, i'll continue along the line of query about uh, forming a common understanding of what these okay. values are when we talk about indic values being conveyed through these various stories so and precisely because uh, you had mentioned these movies which um, uh, suddenly became uh, recently they were in fact uh, cause celebre for the right wing in particular because uh, you know people are all saying okay this is we have arrived you know now uh, we see indian characters or in the indian movies being created at the international scenario now if you see these three movies itself and precisely this is the reason why i am so disturbed because uh, it's okay that this was this is not new indian uh, bollywood has always been had a very wide uh, cultural imprint and in fact this precisely is their uh, excuse uh, for uh, you know being there and uh, for being representatives of india that is what they say but what we are talking about here is whether uh, they convey indic values or not and that that is exactly what uh, these three movies uh, i would question them for uh, for instance all three of them they convey the scene of you know social justice and uh, there's a lot of socialism so patterns the downtrodden the uh, and there are there are these redeemers who come when you are talking about the heroes so are these really indic uh, themes um, these are in fact would be more uh, christian or abrahamic themes where they talk about uh, the entire uh, greek classical civilization came down because this was the theme of you know the downtrodden the underdogs uh, you know rescued by the redeemer so uh, do we see such themes in indian epics for instance do we have these um, op- oppressed and redeemer themes in uh, the indian oh. epic do we have them in uh, rama and do we have them in mahabharat in fact it's a tapestry of characters and of situations which conveys uh, how the acts of human beings result in the consequences that they do and in this uh, background what should be the the index of righteousness and what should be dharma so it is a very sophisticated telling and these movies it's a different thing that they are using indian characters and particularly in the latest movie kantara which was very uh, famous but actually kantara is entirely a communist theme uh, movie it has nothing of dharma so they are i don't think they are um, claiming to be uh, you know movies based on uh, dharma see we do have some stories for example when i was a child i used to watch um, a lot of these uh, shri krishna serials so there used to be stories in which he redeems an old woman or uh, you know uh, there is a there, there is a story when there where, where there is an older woman she was waiting for him to come and redeem her or there are stories of i think kabandha um, he is a, a monster but then he was you know uh, he had to be in that form headless form i'm not i am not really you know very uh, clear about these uh, characters because i had seen them as when i was a child but then there was this kabanda who was you know trapped in a headless body and he had to be redeemed by shri krishna again uh, so we do have such stories we have lot of songs so for example indic i mean there are dances for example there is bharatnatyam there is kuchipudi there is odishi so they are indian you will cl- classify them as indic so in case tomorrow a movie comes which is showing bharatnatyam or odishi so 
we will classify it as that it as an indic movie we will not you know so it's not just based on ramayana and mahabharata but i think the entire way we live the way we dress the way we speak uh, so even in um, for example in uh, bahubali there is a lot of you know love between the uh, mother and the child or you know so uh, those kind of values so i think even they fall under the purview of indicness our our classical dances our classical songs are reaching an international podium which you know never used to happen before this so i i i mean i would encourage such kind of uh, movie making as well okay i'll just uh, elaborate a little bit like you just said that uh, the values which you are saying about dances this and that and culture um and uh, the sentiment between mother and child these are not very generic values and secondly there exactly is the peril if they are using indian culture indian themes indian relationships indian faces to convey a idea which is not entirely indian you said kantara is a good uh, movie for the indic setting but apart from the fact that they are uh, showing a village deity what does the movie actually show an oppressive landlord and the poor people who is the hero he drinks he doesn't work he is not concerned about uh, religion uh, so, uh, when at one moment when he is angry he even hits the uh, his uh, wife uh, to be so uh, the only thing that the movie conveys is uh, the oppressed community poor oppressed community against the government it is anti government it is anti uh, establishment so it is basically a communist theme the only thing different from a communist theme is that they have a god over there similar thing in this thing so and opposite yeah but the oh, characters are not really a part of the indic uh, this thing indic value uh, indic uh, narrative where particularly in storytelling when you are discussing indic narrative it is a very sophisticated and a subtle narrative where uh, they are uh, talking about uh, uh, so my idea is actually not to question these movies but since you ex- gave these examples of these movies i just wanted to put a word of caution that what is portrayed by the movies is not necessarily indic values uh, these are typical themes they are just woven into uh, t- uh, the same ideas which have come from abroad which are woven into indian characters and indian situations but they're not necessarily indian value system so that was in uh, short my submission so i i i completely you know take your uh, uh, you know your viewpoints but i would uh, in my viewpoint i would still say that since Uh, you know it is it is not i cannot say that it is a foreign movie because it is showing the indian way of life and if you so the character also that you started uh, you know you said that you know he was uh, doing certain things which were incorrect but then eventually he starts to believe in the in the god that was the entire movie about that towards the end he starts to believe in 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 uh, in the existence of the uh, kshetra uh, you know bhagwan and then he fights the uh, you know the landlord so okay i understand that these are communists but then this is a story of a village so it might have happened in some village uh, so they have just taken the liberty to show it 